If you're bored with meal planning, this is where you need to be. I'm gonna show you how you could spice things up. We're going to solve what's for dinner. What can we put on our menu plan? Is we need to simplify. I think we overthink things way too much and make things way too complicated. I know this to be truth because I have ADHD and it shows up everywhere in my life, especially in the kitchen with meal planning. One of the first things that you're going to do to help you simplify and kick the boredom to the curb is you're, um, you're going to make a list of all your favorite meals, okay? Now, this isn't going to be the same type of video that I always share with you, okay? If you want to see how you could save like over 60 ways to save on your grocery bill, that was on another live show. I'll leave a link for it for you down below. But what you need to do, honestly, is sit down. If you're sitting with me right now, take a, a piece of paper, grab your planner, grab your notebook, write down all of your favorite go-to meals, the things that you guys seem to gravitate towards. Because I could tell you right now, part of being bored is that the foods that you're always running to, you may be having them way too often. Okay. And we're going to break this down here in just a minute with theme dinners. We're going to talk about theme nights. So write down all your go-to meals. You could do sides. I usually just focus on like on the main thing. Now you can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I think one of the main things that are going to help you to simplify and streamline is to focus on one meal during the day. Yes, breakfast is a super, super important meal to start the day off with. I don't always plan breakfast every day. Our schedules are different. I think when the kids were little, I was able to do that more. Um, but we all have our own schedules. We're always like on the go. So I just focus on dinner. That is my main priority when it comes to meal planning. Now, later, we're going to talk about make ahead meals and getting things prepped for later. And that's where you can get like your freezer meals for your breakfast all lined up. But I mainly, mainly, mainly focus on dinner because that's the big meal of the day. And it usually costs the most. So when you're simplifying, focus on one. So you're going to list your family's go to. Now, on this slide here, it, it goes with my building a food storage class that I put on. Um, and I on, on here, you can see it says list the major ingredients for each meal. That's if you want to stock up your pantry. Um, and this is what my pantry looks like, you guys, uh, if you're new here. So I have my normal pantry there on the left. And then I have our big food storage room. That is like our mini grocery store. That is where we shop from. So I shop there first. Then I check the sales and go to the grocery store. I have many videos on that down below for you. We could talk about that on another time, but I have so many videos that you could look down below. Then you can go, once you have your list, like your go-to meals, um, and I, I mean, this list could go on and on. I like filled up two sheets one time and it's, and then you kind of remember like, oh yeah, that meal. We haven't had that meal in a while. So then what you're going to do is you're going to keep uh, uh, those stable ingredients that you go have for those meals on hand. So if you're noticing that a pattern going to the grocery store, you're always grabbing the same things because they usually go to, for your go-to meal. So just make sure that you have on hand those things so you can make those meals. And this is what leads into my food storage. Then those ingredients also can go to other things too. But like I have stewed tomatoes in there. There's only one reason why I have stewed tomatoes and that's for my minestrone soup. But I noticed I found another recipe that called for stewed tomatoes and I was like, sweet, I have them in my pantry. So then that way, when I go make my shopping list for a new recipe, because we are gonna still search for new recipes that's coming up, in just a bit, we are going to still look for new recipes, but you might actually have some of that already in your pantry ready to go, and that's going to help you save money. Terry says, her planner really helps shop your shelves too. Yes, there is a section um, in the planner. Let me show you really quick since we're mentioning it. In my She's in Her Apron planner, I have a section called Shop Your Shelves. It helps you to keep track of what you have on a monthly basis. So in my planner, you, you have this spread every month and what it's great for is like 
before you go shopping, I say try to do this either weekly or every two weeks. Go in and you could jot down what you want to use up in your freezer. What do you have lurking in your freezer, like in your freezer, in your refrigerator, in your pantry? Um, what do you have in there that you totally forgot about because it got blocked by a container of mayo or sour cream or jelly or something, right? Things get shoved in the back. So when you're meal planning every week, you're looking to find the lurkers. What is just hiding, right? Then you write that in the planner and then you can use it during the month when you're meal planning every week. And so then we have a section here uh, for menu planning and meal ideas that you could just brain dump and just write them in, right? So you can just put it all there and to help you use up what you have. But anything, you guys, when you're menu planning, I mean, it could be a sheet of paper. It could be your calendar that you have hanging on your wall. Jot it down. Put it on your refrigerator. You need to see your menu. You need to see it in order to have success at this because out of sight, out of mind. So make it fun. Um, you know, get it up there and put color to it. You know, make it fun because you get bored. Okay. We're trying to make this exciting again, right? The next thing that we need to do to simplify our meal planning and kick the boredom out the window is to have a source of where you're getting these recipes. Okay. If you're collecting recipes and you are printing them off, where are they going? Are they going in a drawer? I hope not. I hope not. I hope they're going into a binder. I created re uh, recipe binders years ago. I actually have a video on that. I'll leave it below for you. Print them off, put them in sheet protectors, throw them in a binder. It just makes things so much easier when you're trying to find a recipe. Who doesn't love Pinterest? I love Pinterest, you guys. If you're not taking advantage of Pinterest, I highly suggest you do. So many, I, that's like the number one thing I go to is Pinterest, especially when I'm trying to take maybe a recipe that I already have and see how somebody else takes a take on it, right? Because I noticed like uh, red peppers are amazing thrown in casseroles. It adds such a flavor that is so different. Hey, Steph also says, I made a recipe binder and I have them sectioned off by holidays and every day. Yes, I know I actually ended up streamlining all my binders. So now I have a holiday, I used to have one holiday binder and then I separated it. So now I have one for Thanksgiving and one for Christmas. And so all my go-tos for those seasons are in there. And that is so important. Uh, to do because it motivates you when you when it's Thanksgiving time and you grab that binder and you, you're seeing all the recipes in that season. Also, do you um, have recipes that are family favorites? Do you have recipe cards from like your mom or your grandma? What do they do that you could switch things up in them and make them new and exciting? One area that I really love going to is all recipes. I have used all recipes four years, allrecipes.com, you could type in like just a few ingredients that you have. So let's say you're in your refrigerator and you're like, oh, I've got, uh, I don't know, I've got zucchini and uh, red onions I need to use up and I don't know what to make. Uh, type in those ingredients and it'll pull up recipes for you. So if you're trying to get through things, you know, especially when we're shopping our shelves, we wrote things down, that we need to use up. I love heading over there, typing it in and just seeing what recipes pop up. So easy, so, so helpful. Lucia, you are the one who inspired me to make a recipe binders. Oh, yay. I, they are such a big help. They are such a big help and they're so fun. They're so fun and motivating. Mine are actually all destroyed. They're all taken apart because of working on the cookbook. So they're in a basket right over here. Um, in sections for the cookbook. Now, okay, another fun one that I love to do, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love going to the DI. Um, it's a Goodwill type of store, okay? And I go in there and I gun it for the cookbooks. Gun it over there. I get cookbooks for like $1.75. And I, I just go through and I, I, I go for the old cookbooks. 
Okay, if you notice here on the slide, you see the old cookbooks. Those are my favorite. I love old school, old cookbooks because they are such a base for the recipes that we eat now. They're just dialed up more. So it is seriously a good baseline for a recipe and then think outside the box of how you can make it better. Yeah, so that's where Pinterest comes in because you can see what other people are doing. And did you know that a lot of our recipes actually stem from, I noticed from the Great Depression and the 1950s where with all the casseroles, like casseroles were really brought into place during the 1950s when uh, canned goods really came into play like with the cream soups and things. So you grab those cookbooks Okay. And you could see how you could spice them up. I love those. Those are my favorite old, old cookbooks. Once you get your inspiration, you have new recipes, okay? You need a place to track them. And so that's where I absolutely love the recipe binders. This is where it will get fun and you won't seem so bored. Start thinking of dinner theme nights. I'm sure you have seen this before, but we're going to we're going to stay here and talk about this for a little bit here because this is where the boredom is going to get thrown out the window, okay? Six sister stuff on YouTube. Yes, baking mama of 3. I totally agree with you. They are amazing, the six sisters. Their cookbooks are so easy to follow and delicious. I love their recipes. Absolutely love them. So you could literally take it by like the day of the week and put like uh not like a mantra, but like, okay, so Mondays, it could be Mediterranean, make it your own mom's choice. Because seriously, when do we get to pick what we want to eat? Because we're always focused on everyone else. A Mexican meatless. So, you know, so if you're a vegetarian, there you go. So Tuesdays, it could be Taco Tuesday, Turkey Tuesday, Try it Tuesday, something completely new. You go search up and try, like something that you would never have eaten before. Fly Lady Cat is on. She likes mom's choice. I agree, Cat. I agree. And then, like Wednesdays, you could do waffle Wednesdays and you could really do up waffles. Okay. And then, wacky Wednesday, you could, I mean, have your kids. This is if you still have kids at home, get them involved. I remember on April Fool's Day, like when we were first married, my mother-in-law set out on the table food, but in order for us to eat it, she put out different types of utensils that would make things a little difficult, like spatulas and big spoons and tongs, and it just made it fun. So do something completely outside the box. So you could also do whatever Wednesday or wrap it Wednesday where you could do different types of wraps if you're into wraps. And that could be like even a burrito. I mean, anything, anything that you can wrap, go for it. And then Thursdays, you could do Thai, thrifty. So maybe you're going to see what you can make up for like $5 or less. Um, throwback to maybe one of your grandmother's favorite recipes. From, and I mean, or pick up a go look at um, Great Depression recipes. Um, here on my channel, I actually have a playlist on Great Depression recipes. I have three videos for you that you could try different Great Depression recipes that I know you're going to love. We actually, I can say that there hasn't been one where I'm like, mm -mm, I wouldn't eat that. No, every recipe that I have tried and shared with you, so good. The Great Depression meatloaf is actually really, really good. Yes, Sarah, look up Clara's um, Great Depression recipe channel. She's great. I know she's passed, um, but her channel is still going strong. Her family is doing a great job with that. Oh, Connie, I love this. Make green egg and ham on Wacky Wednesday if you've got little ones. Yes. And you know what? Even if you don't, even if it's just two of you, have fun. Make it a date night. Make it crazy. Oh, yes. A smorgasbord night. Kathy, I love that. Love that. Yes. This is from Terry. I do crock pot Monday since they, that's my weekly home blessing and deep cleaning day. Super, super Sundays. I love that. Okay. So Fridays, fish Friday, we grew up having fish on Fridays. I grew up in Massachusetts. So we always went and got fish and chips. You could do fondue Friday, right? To have fondue night where you're dipping things in cheeses and different broths. So yummy. Fried night, pick your favorite fried food. And then family faves, she picks, someone in the family gets to pick their favorite meal 
and um, and they could showcase it, right? So when it comes to meal planning with your kids and getting them to eat, have them pick a meal during the week. Now, also, yes, that's their meal that they picked. Great. But get them in the kitchen with you and have them cooking. We have started this with uh, our two youngest that are still at home. We have four children. Two are out of the home, two in. And they have been cooking. this, And they get excited about it. So Boston made this he is uh, 15. The last week he made this yummy teriyaki chicken, which he learned in his home ec class, like his foods class. And it was amazing. It was so good. So now I'm putting that recipe in the recipe binder and he was so excited to make it for everybody. And Shaylee, our youngest, was excited to eat it because he made it. So get them in. And then Shaylee picked uh, two weeks ago, she wanted clam chowder for dinner and she made it. So she got in there and she learned how to cook diced tomatoes, peeled tomatoes, dice them, uh, learned how to make the, uh, like the chowder part separate from sauteing the rest of the veggies. Oh my gosh. She was in there and she did it and it was delicious. Finger foods and we have fridge clean out. And that is a good way to use up your leftovers. And then Saturdays, you could do stir fries, sandwiches, sheet pan, sushi, slow cooker. Sundays, do a seafood, soul food, spaghetti, soup, skillet. But of course, you could do these on any days. But this is just one way of making it fun, right? Then you can also do nights where you could do an Asian theme, barbecue, breakfast, brunch, burger, casserole, a charcuterie board. Oh my goodness, you guys. I love charcuterie boards. This is actually a great lunch to do. So if you are like a, um, someone that likes to nibble and not so much have a lunch, that's how I am. Sometimes I'm just not hungry, like full on hungry during the day um, and have a big lunch. So I love to snack. So making a charcuterie board with different hams or crackers and cheeses. You could put anything on a charcuterie board, you guys, anything. Um, and the kids absolutely love them. They will eat anything you put on there. And that is fact, at least with my kids. They will actually try new things if it's laid out like that. I don't know what it is, if there's some sort of psychology to it. I don't know, but they will try it. At least my kids do. So uh, charcuterie boards are a great way to have like people try, especially your kids try new things. Oh, my everyday wife life. She's the sweetest. Go check out her channel too, guys. Oh my goodness. I do yoga bar for little, for littles when they come over, over yogurt and all the topics they want and they love it. That is such a good idea. I love theme night. So fun. First Friday of the month is stir fry day at our house and the teenagers are in charge. I love that. Uh, we taught them how to cook in a walk and they have so much fun with it. See, this is great. The homesteading minimalist says I have freezer lunches. When you have random freeze food, that's not enough to feed the whole family. The two corn dogs, the leftover tater tots, fries, pizza rolls, whatever we cook it all. That's right. Just have a complete random night. It's a great way to use up what's in your freezer. All right. So you could do gourmet grilled cheese. Oh my goodness. Have you ever put pesto in your grilled cheese? It is so good. That definitely brings it up. I love putting tomato in my grilled cheese. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and you can have a grill out day where you're grilling and still do that in the winter, you guys. Oh, yeah. Yum. Uh, Indian, Italian, leftover night, nacho night. Oh, we love nachos here. We love nachos. One pan wonders, pastas, pizza and pajamas. That's a fun one. Potato bar. Oh, my goodness. We love potato bar. If you have a lot of leftover veggies and some protein, make a potato bar. Use that for toppings. If you need to use up sour creams, put that on top. If you have any cheese you want to use up. And then you could do uh, twice baked potatoes. Those are so good. Baked potatoes cut in half. You scoop everything out. 
you put it in a bowl. Then you take all those toppings that you had maybe like the day before or that night and you put it in with your potatoes, mix it all up, season it super good. I actually have a video that I did during the summer on this. I'll link it below for you. Uh, some butter and some mayo, not mayo, uh, sour cream. You could do dill seasoning, ranch seasoning in it, uh, add cheese, and then you mix it up and then you put it back in the, its casing and then you throw it in the oven. Those actually make really good freezer meals. The video is below. I share with you how you could do this step by step. It's delicious. Then you could do um, things in your pressure cooker, your instant pot, your slow cooker, um, and have a soup and salad bar. Yes, potato bar is the best. My family loves that. It's so good. I love a potato bar. Have I tried cauliflower nachos? No, but I have seen it done and it intrigues me. Oh yes, I do chili baked potatoes. Yum, yum. Yes, pesto grilled cheese. I think you just changed my life. Yes, try that. It is so delicious. I actually learned about pesto grilled cheese from eating at Zupa's. They have, uh, a, they're, it's just called like the ultimate grilled cheese, I think. And there's pesto in there, tomato. Um, and I'm not sure what type of cheese is in it, but it's so good. So if you go to a restaurant, your favorite restaurant, what's your favorite meal that you get from there that you can make at home? Um, we absolutely love Cafe Rio salads. Uh, and Costa Vita salads. So I found a recipe on how I can, like a copycat recipe and how we can make it at home. I actually shared a video years ago on how to do that and I'll leave it below for you. And now I can make them here instead of going out and doing it. So you could see now how you can really change things up, make things fun uh, and spice it up a bit. Now, if you have your go-tos and you're eating the same things like every week, maybe you can change it to where you have it in quarters or seasons. Like taco soup, we have more in the fall and winter. You could say, okay, we're maybe we're eating this way too much. We're really tired of this one meal. Maybe you have that during a certain quarter of the year. So you're not so sick of it. So like, it reminds me of when my kids were younger and I would rotate their toys. So it would seem exciting and new again. So I went through their toys and I would box up certain things. Okay. Because they had a lot. And frankly, it was a pain in the butt to clean up all the time. Right. So I would box things up and put them away. Later, I would switch out their toys and it was like Christmas to them. They were so excited to play with those toys. Um, they thought like I went out and bought them new toys. It's like either they forgot or out of sight, out of mind. Same with our meals. Maybe slow your roll on your go-tos. Spread them out. Maybe by quarters. All right, Stephanie, what ideas do you have for Super Bowl game foods? I actually put out a video last Thursday on our like go-to game foods. But you know, you could actually have appetizers as one of the nights to make it fun. What are your favorite appetizers that you love to make and have that for dinner? Actually, I know someone who does this on Thanksgiving. We have some friends whose family has now made this a tradition. I don't know how long they've been doing this, but it's been years. They actually only serve on Thanksgiving appetizers. They don't do the turkey. They don't do the sides. It's all apps. Everyone brings their favorite apps. And I love that idea. I don't know if I could do it on Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving so much. I love the prep. I love the cooking. I love the gluttony of it. You know, all your go-to favorites. And, um, but I just thought, wow, that is different. That is awesome. So I, yeah, they love it. They absolutely love doing that. It's from Laura. I change my rotation every season. I make a calendar every month. Yes, that way your go-tos don't seem so boring. So if you remember when I shared with you our big pantries, a lot of these things get cycled through all year. And a lot of these things only get cycled during certain times of the year, certain quarters of the year. Um, right now, we're going through black beans, kidney beans. Uh, we're actually going through the uh, tomato soups. And we have a lot of shepherd's pie. There's certain times of the year where certain things fly off our shelf a little bit more. It, it just makes things easier when it comes to planning. So I know 
when I am searching for sales and I'm, you know, I made my menu, I shop my shelves, then I can go to my flyers and I can see what's on sale. So right now uh, I could get craft barbecue sauce for 99 cents after the sale. And I don't think I need a coupon for this one. This is one is with Smith's and Smith's is a Kroger. I don't think I need any coupon. I think it's if you buy four, you can get it for 99 cents. I'm okay right now on barbecue sauce. This sale, I can actually let slide by because it's going to show up again right before Memorial Day. No problem if I miss this sale. I know it's coming because sales happen on a cycle. So I'm okay if I miss this sale. Laura asks, what do you store in your pantry versus your storage room? Good question. On the left, you see my normal pantry. That Those are the things that are already open, right? So I have my cereals in there, uh, crackers that are already open that are in bins. The pantry has like my flour, my sugars, um, we have all our snack food. I have bins for granola bars where we keep our bread, our potatoes, our onions, our garlic. My baking needs are all in there. Like our drinking packets that we put in our drinks are in there. And then the big food storage room that you see here is all the backup. So things get moved either straight to the counter to eat or if we open something up, it gets moved into the pantry. So I, yes, I have a mini grocery store in my home. This is how I shop my shelves. So that way I'm shopping my home first before I head out and spend more money. Now, this is where it helps to beat inflation because you are buying things on sale at a low point. So when you make it later in the year, when it's higher, you're shopping your shelves, you're actually saving money. You're so we, I have so many videos on this. I'll leave them below for you. And we could talk about it on another live. Um, but that is the difference. So that is like, I could go about three, six, maybe nine months. But it's all about keeping track. And that is definitely another video that we could talk about that. Um, also, what helps with if you want to do things in season um, Shop the produce that's in season. I actually did a video last week on what is in season right now for January and February that I will leave in the description box below for you. So you can see, keep an eye out for certain produce that's in season. So if you're watching the replay and it is the summer and you're finding great produce and fruit, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables that are on sale, um, at a really great price because they're in season, that's when you can stock up and you can prep. So what you can do is actually get your hands on all this great produce. And if you have a dehydrator, if you have a freeze dryer, if you um, utilize your freezer and you can put these things away to have for later, this helps with having it on hand. And I don't think I need to go into full explanation of why we should be doing this. I think after the last three years, you could see why we need to do this. Shop what's in season and create your meals around that. You will save money. I All this year, I'm going to be sharing with you every month what is um, in season. So the February post should go up on Instagram and Facebook this week. Uh, I already posted January's and I already have the video up for January and February. So you can see that on, on what's on sale. So, and what usually goes up on sale, hopefully with everything going on, things are still, um, still the same thing that you could go look for as well. Ooh, Carol, broccoli and cauliflower soup. Oh yeah, that sounds amazing. All right. So you're, you can rotate through the seasons maybe move things quarterly. You could break it up that way. That beats the boredom. All right. So then you're going to plan. One way to make sure that you get dinner on the table is by prepping. So you've, you've made your menu, you shopped your shelves, gone shopping, and now you're home with all of your goodies. Okay. What you can do is get things prepped. You're going to get these prepped and ready to go because you do not want to waste your precious food. Sometimes we can't get to our produce or meats fast enough. Um, but if, if you notice like, I'm not going to use this in time, 
get it wrapped up, get it in the freezer. You can freeze almost everything. I actually have a video. I'll leave it for you down below if you're new to me. I have a video on 40 things that freeze well and another video on 25 more things that freeze well. I'll leave that for you down below. You can freeze almost anything. Get it in your freezer or get it in your dehydrator or get it in your freeze dryer. I think I have ham in my freeze dryer right now. So what you could do is pre-cook any meats that you need to have pre-cooked, get them ready to go, put them in your fridge, chop up any vegetables, wash and prepare the fruit, the veggies, uh, wash and dry your lettuce, um, prepare some salads ahead of time. That way you could bring them to work. Um, I love having pre-made salad ready to go. Like ditch the kits, make your own, um, and get them in your refrigerator. If you notice that you, during the week, um, if you work outside the home and it's hard when you get home, you have no motivation to cook whatsoever, and then we end up getting takeout. No, 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 no. Take advantage of your slow cooker. Um, have it, I try to find one where you can get it with the timer where it'll move to warm for you. Um, if not, get on the phone and say, hey, I got the slow cooker portion, not the whole thing, but like the, where you put the food in and you put, oh my gosh, the bowl of it. You can have your food already made with your meats, your chicken, put it in the fridge, have someone take that out, put it into the slow cooker and start it for you. Um, if you are noticing like we need to put a freezer meal in the oven, you can, a lot of the casseroles can actually go from freezer straight to the oven. Call up whoever's home and be like, hey, go grab this, throw it in the oven. So by the time you get home from work, it is done. Yes, you could throw the whole cold brick of ice in your oven. Just extend your cooking time. All right, so the big key is having things ready to go for us when we need something. So we're dishing the fast food, okay? So invest in certain containers that are, and I will, after this live, I'm going to go in and put more links in uh, for the containers that I use. Okay, so here you can see all the way on the left are those black containers. I actually have some that look like bento boxes as well. They can go into your freezer and they can be used in the microwave. They're great for um, like make your own TV dinners. I've done that. I'll leave that video down below. You can make your own TV dinners, um, make your individual portions. So if you're cooking for just the two of you, take your meal, put them into portions and get them in these containers and get them in your fridge for the week or throw them in your freezer for later down the road. Get these things made so that way you can have a smoother week. Uh, find a day during the week where you can prep. Uh, is it a Sunday for you? Is Sundays easier to prep or do you work the weekends? What day do you have that you can set some time aside to get these things made and, and put in your fridge and freezer? I know like, if you have one day off during the week, you hate just using it for prep, but sometimes we have to do the things that we don't like to do and get it part of your routine. Do you have a routine? Get it in there. Make it a habit. Um, I do a lot of my prep on Sundays, especially it's usually make bread day where I can make my homemade bread for the week. Uh, I now, because of what I do in filming, I'm constantly prepping. I mean, it's my life. So with filming it, so I'm, I'm always prepping and um, getting things ready for the fridge and freezer. Um, get it as a habit. These things need to become habit. Yes, I am sponsoring today's video, the She's in Her Apron Planner, you guys. This is a lifesaver. We have sections in here to help you meal plan. We have freezer inventory, its own section. We have a morning and evening routine. Uh, we have dual calendars. We have a budget section. And we have your week broken down so you can actually see your menu. It's great. So this is the weekly spread. And right here is the menu planner, like the menu for the week. So you have the, um, the full section of shopping your shelves. And then right next to it, is the meal plan section. And then you can go into your week 
and put everything right here so you can see it. It's so great. So if you need to form some new habits for this new year, grab a planner. If planners aren't your things, grab a notebook. Get used to either plugging it in your phone, getting it on your refrigerator, or a planner, notebook, anything. You, meal planning has to be a habit. It has to be second nature in order for us to succeed and save money and get dinner on the table. And it's always so motivating when you have something like a planner. Uh, I've always been a planner girl. I'm definitely, I need to write. Uh, I've tried the whole phone thing. It doesn't work for me. I need paper. I need paper. So I created my own planner. I was like, that's it. I'm creating my own planner with my ADHD and I'm going to find something that works for me. So find something that works for you. And if you have ADHD or know someone that has ADHD, check out our planners. We actually have a weekly date book and a daily planner. We are getting rid of those and we're combining them. I'm streamlining it. And I have actually been in it for the last two months and I'm like, so good. It's so good. So if you are a planner person that doesn't necessarily like people telling you what to do with a morning and evening routine, go, you'll have to check it out. So that'll be up on the shop here real soon. All right. So tell your friends, if you have anyone that's struggling with ADHD, go check it out. If you need a little more structure, I encourage you to go check out the planners. Uh, let's go back to ways that we can make some make ahead meals and get dinner on the table. Does the mason jar vacuum sealer still work for lettuce and veggies? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. This nifty little contraption, I don't know where I saw it. Maybe I saw it on someone's video on YouTube and I was like, okay, I need to try this. Um, I know my food saver machine actually has, has one, but it never works good um, where you could put it over your mason jar and it'll take the air out what I got right here. Uh, I'll leave a link for it down below, but it actually seals so good. It comes with two sizes. You could do uh, the wide mouth and the narrow mouth jars. And all you need to do is charge it. And it, it lasts, the charge lasts a very long time, you guys, very, very long time. So I put my lettuce in there. I put, um, gosh, my strawberries, my blueberries in there. Yeah. Especially your lettuce put your lettuce in there. And I actually now put it with a paper towel or a napkin and it is, it lasts so long and it's so crisp. So keep the, um, the, the sealer nearby. So, so when you, every time you open the jar, it's like right there. So you could just hurry up and do it again and you're good to go. Your produce will stretch. Your lettuce will stretch. And right now I noticed, um, and I've been seeing rumors that lettuce is, you know, of course it's super expensive. So I still, even though our family has shrunk, I still go buy my lettuce at Sam's club and Costco because I can make it stretch now with the, that with the sealer. So I will leave that for you down below and it's not expensive at all. Okay. So Nancy drew asks, so that device Kimmy is, is showing works on standard Mason jars. Yes. Yes. Yep. Is it Raina? She bought the same one and she says it, uh, it works great. It does. It's so good. And then I'm like, where have you been all my life? When is the cookbook coming out? I could not give you a date. We are still plugging along on that bad boy. It takes a long time, but I will be having some uh, downloads for you guys. So there'll be free portions of different types of cookbooks that you guys can get um, that we're working on as well. So those are coming out. I know I can't give you a time. I'm so, so sorry. We are hoping and praying that the menu planners, like its own menu planner, we're praying before Mother's Day. Pray. Oh, Terry, she loves the paper quality. Are you, are you talking about my planner? Yeah, it's like butter. The paper is so good. It's so smooth. This is the four month of it. So you can get it in a big fat yearly. I don't have one to show you. I just donated it to um an event that i'm going to all the ones i had here at my house i donated for a silent auction so um but this is it in a four month so you can break it down so if you have adhd and you like shiny new things we all do i know you can get three of them for the year you could pick your cover and so this is the one i picked for 
January. I wanted something bright and fun during the winter. So uh, yeah, you can get them in four months. You can get them in a bundle or you can get the big fat guy. Either one. Either one. I like shiny and new. Yeah. I, that's what I like. All right. So let's get back to this section here. You can invest in some aluminum tins, uh, tin, aluminum tins, aluminum foil type um, pans. I love those. I always keep a backup in my pantry. Sam's Club seems to be the cheapest in bulk, um, but the price of them is going up. You can get them at the dollar store. They work good, but they're just not as strong um, as buying them in bulk, like on Amazon or Sam's Club. And uh, yeah, but they definitely invest in those, especially if you're trying to do freezer meals. So yeah, invest in that. Uh, mason jars are a great way to store your food. Uh, glass Pyrex containers with lids are great. I just break a lot. I drop a lot, you guys. Like, it's bad. I break things, like, constantly. Uh, yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. So I am all about the plastic. I know. And then uh, do you can get half sheet pans or get the big sheet pans. And I have, I have a two really big ones that I got from Joann's. I actually have a link, uh, an Amazon link for you guys. I'll put that in after I found them. I found them on Amazon because Joann's didn't have them anymore because I got them on a Black Friday deal and I then I couldn't find them anymore. Um, but I did find them on Amazon. I like scoured Amazon because I wanted new ones. So I found them. I'll leave a link for you. Uh, the muffin tins are great. The silicone muffin tins are amazing to make like your egg bites in. They easily pop out. Um, you can actually uh, freeze your eggs. So if you're dealing with eggs right now, like the whole world is, you can freeze your eggs. You can either put them in whole to add to like breads or baking, but you can scramble them up in there and freeze them and then pop them out when they're fully frozen, put them in uh, Ziploc bags or a container with a lid, pop them in your freezer, and then you have eggs for later. Bento style lunch boxes, um, all these things just help with preparing and getting things into your refrigerator and freezer. But it's key, key, key to have things ready to go during the week if you work outside the home. Oh, that's great. Love what the food storage organizer and you have taught me. I've even got my husband involved. Yay, Valerie from uh, the foodstorageorganizer.com. She is amazing. This is, I learned from her uh, the beginning of our marriage. Like I've been following her for a long time and uh, it her method has helped me so much. She is amazing. And let's see here. Can you use it on jars? from tomato sauce you used or other size jar lids. Yes. Yes. Um, it should work. Um, you're going to have to test it. If it's the same as a mason jar, you might be able to. I haven't done it with a store jar. So that's actually a good question. That's a good question. Yes. So Marcy, uh, so when you do the ledge, you put a paper towel in. Yes. I've done it before without a paper towel. Um, but I just noticed that the second time I did it, it needed a paper towel. So sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it does. So it's really weird. Um, I think too, it depends on if you haven't dried your lettuce after you washed it. Um, and so if you still have some moisture, so that can make a big difference um, there. So I would just go ahead and put a paper towel in. Aw, Terry, you're so sweet. I just got here to this live stream and already learned about saving fresh lettuce and veggies. Yay. It's fun. I'm learning every day. You guys, I absolutely, I do not call myself an expert. I just absolutely love learning. I love learning and what I can do to improve certain areas with meal planning, with cooking. And it's a passion. It really is. And I absolutely love it. And I just love sharing it with you all. Do you put the paper towel in the bottom of the top? I put it on like the bottom and then kind of bring it up on the side. So if that's helpful, but that's what I do. So these tips will definitely help if there are just the two of you. Um, you could still have fun. You could still have theme nights. If you have picky eaters, have them pick the meal and get them involved cooking. I think too, if you have kids that are picky eaters, getting them involved cooking, touching, feeling it, they will end up trying it and eating it. 
Um, also, don't buy things that really don't belong to one of your meals. Yes, it's always so good to try something, but make sure that when you're in the store, you know a recipe beforehand. Uh, I think a lot of the times we have great expectations and great ambitions of, oh, I'm going to make this, I'm going to do this, and then our food goes to waste. Um, that's why I don't I don't necessarily meal plan for the whole month. I take it weekly. At least I know like, okay, if I'm buying chicken and bulk or or meat in bulk that we could use it up within the month but i really just focused on the week and by that you're not wasting a lot of the food so look at your planners look at your calendars what's going on this week um is there a day during the week that a slow cooker meal would be better for everybody you know especially with your schedule um it, would it be easier if we did a leftover night or a grazing night um i i look at my schedule so like this week i have two nights this week that are taking me out of the home and i have two events that i need to be at so what am i going to be doing those nights i'm either pulling something out of the freezer getting it in my slow cooker or throwing it in my oven or just taking the fresh ingredients making a casserole really quick or in the slow cooker. And then that way um, we're not running out for takeout. So look at your schedule. What is going on during the week that would make things a little bit easier for you to get dinner on the table? It's egg whites and egg substitute. Okay, so egg whites, you're definitely gonna just have to separate the yolk from the egg and you could still freeze the whites whole like in the silicone muffin tins it's so much easier that way just invest in a silicone muffin tin seriously it'll save you it'll save your sanity uh you can scramble the egg white up as well um, and then later when it's nice and frozen into a little round disc um freeze it individually stephanie's nine-year-old grandson loves watching that's sweet will you tell him i said hello thank you Oh, I am so sorry you lost your son. There's seasons of life. We all go through things, right? And sometimes um, it, it makes meal planning easier or harder. Right now with the projects that I have right now, I have to have make ahead meals in the fridge and in the freezer, I need to have freezer meals. There is a lot that is taking my attention away that, um, and I work from in the home. So that's, that's hard. It's like, I have my routines and then it's like, okay, I got to work. But then I can have tunnel vision, ADHD. Remember, I can hyper-focus too. So I have all these projects and deadlines that I'm trying to get done. And so dinner is like, honestly, like, so that's why when we have things ready to go, we can have some smooth sailing. Some weeks are going to go smoother than others. Some are not. And that is okay. Okay. So are there any ingredients that don't freeze well or that you need to cook first? Well, there's things like your sour cream and your cottage cheese. You can freeze those things, but when you, and cream cheese, but they're not going to be the same consistency when they're thawed. So those things you're going to use in like casseroles, um, enchiladas, uh, pasta dishes, those type like casseroles that those can go in and do fine. Absolutely fine. It just breaks it down a little bit. And I mean, try it and you might not mind it, but like your cream cheese is not going to be so smooth. Um, pasta, you can freeze pasta. Uh, so you can actually make pasta kits and put them in your freezer. You cook your pasta like normal, but I shouldn't say normal. You're going to cook your pasta right till it's al dente almost a little hard it's like almost there so you have to like baby your pot of water and then you take it out hurry and get cold water on it rinse it off then you lay it flat on a cookie sheet i think i actually have a video on this um you lay it flat on a cookie sheet get it in your freezer let it sit in there for about an hour or two or when you remember sometimes it's been like the whole day i'm like oh yeah i have the that in the freezer that i need to get out and then you can put it into a baggie um in a food saver bag and get it in your fridge or a container or whatever. And so later you could take it out and put some sauce on there, wrap it up, put it in the microwave and you've got pasta ready to go. So I hope that helped. I've been working on getting my husband to get me a freezer for meal prep for three years, still working on it. You know, there's a saying I heard and uh, I've tried it a few times and it's worked. Do and ask forgiveness later just saying. <laughs>
but don't get in trouble. <laughs> and then later, he, there, it's usually like, that was, a, that was smart. I'm glad we did that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't get in trouble. But I usually just do and ask forgiveness later. I'm actually wanting another freezer. I know. I know. Okay. So if you're new here, I have a huge, like, full-on standing freezer. Then in the within my food storage room, with it is another refrigerator with a freezer, a normal freezer up top. Then in here in the kitchen, I have our freezer. And then in my pantry, I have a freezer in there. Oh my gosh. It's a little one. It's a little one that I got from Sam's Club. I don't think you could see it in this picture. Oh yes, you can. See that white thing to the right in my um, normal pantry? That's a freezer. It's a small one. Got it at Sam's Club. It's phenomenal. Uh, and I know Costco has one, uh, a freezer that has the drawers. So it's just, you open the door and it's got all these drawers. Well, my, I've been eyeing it for a while. Um, and my mom and dad got it and they love it because now they use it for like all their veggies. They're huge veggie eaters. So they just fill it with veggies. So nothing gets lost in their freezer. No veggie gets lost. So yeah. It's pretty cool. I, I would like that one. It's just where are we going to put it? That's the thing. Oh, thank you, Tracy. I really appreciate that. She's saying she appreciates all the hard work. Thank you. I haven't had much sleep lately. <laughs> but I'm just setting things up, you know, put in the hard work now, and then things will be able to slow down. Can I stock banana? Yes. You can actually put them in your freezer. Put those bad boys in there. You can actually uh, freeze them with the peel still on it. You can take it out of the peel and lay them out, freeze them individually, and then um, pop them in your freezer. So you can slice them up or chunks for smoothies. Oh, yeah. We bought the one with the drawers from Costco on sale back in the fall. Do you like it? Oh, my gosh. We were given a small chest freezer, but it was so hard to get things out. I'm so short. I could have fallen in. You know, it's so true. Okay. So what I did for my chest freezer, we used to have a chest freezer. We gave it to my brother-in-law, um, was we got these, I think you could see it in my freezer organizing video. So go check that out. I actually learned this from a gal named Alexandria. She, I don't know. If she, I don't think she does videos on YouTube anymore. Um, but she got these recycling bins with handles that she, I don't know what they're for, but they have handles, but she used them in her freezer. And I was like, genius. So I would put things in there and I was able to, in my chest freezer, put two on top of each other. So then all I had to do was grab the handle and pull them out. So I wasn't like in there diving in and trying to find things. And I um, organized them by like certain things. And I have two or three that I'm still using in my uh, big stand-in freezer. So that might help with your chest freezer. Oh, good. She loves it. Yay. Oh gosh. I'm kicking myself. I'm kicking myself. Can you freeze orange? Yes, you can actually share that in my, um, what to stock latest, what to stock up video. And that took care of January and February, what's on sale and what to stock up on. And I freeze my oranges that were starting to go and we just weren't going through them as fast. So I peeled them, laid them out, you know, sliced them, I didn't have to slice, but just took them apart, laid them on a sheet, put them in the freezer, and then put them in a bag later, and they're in there. So now we can throw them into our smoothies. Yum, 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 yum. She says, I finally, after years, just ordered a stand-up freezer with our tax return, and hubby said this is a great idea. See? Yay. Yay. I was so happy that I won a chest freezer, 80 pounds of chicken and 275 pounds of beef. Wow. Way to go. That's awesome. Hope you can see where you can make your meal planning fun and get the excitement back into it. So if you want to learn over 60 ways that you can save on your grocery budget and cut it in half, just click on this video here. And if you want to learn how you can organize your freezers and learn more about freezer meals, you can also click on this video here. Enjoy the rest of your day and afternoon, and I will see you soon. Bye.